get to some honors and reports. H2K, the whole team is getting <laughs> getting a report there. Report so H2K's that's management. Too easy. That's gone. That's too easy. Uh, let's start with honors in EU, because we're just talking about it. And you got to go to G2, the man in the top lane. That is Wonder, the former Splice top laner. This guy is probably the best top laner in EU right now. 12 KDA <laughs> last week, 80% kill participation, 879 damage a minute in two games on Gangplank. I was going to say, doing that in the top lane is something that's that's, no, that's a gangplank. Yeah, that's it. no feat to not, you know, be impressed about there. Wonder really had a great week and a really strong performance. And this is something that we talked about, you know, with G2, that their big carry is perks and everything like that. And, you know, maybe Jankos can get something going on here. But hey, it was Wonder that actually really stepped up his game this week and allowed them and really helped them get the victories that they do need to start racking up in this season. And so he's a guy that looking forward now, hopefully to next week, you no, know, maybe he does provide them another outlet for victory. Definitely a really great week from him. Yeah, him and Yankos both look pretty solid. Perks continues to be great. The only question mark still for G2 is that bot lane because Hjarnan uh, is still getting caught out of a position a lot. But I think Wonder's been the best performing top laner so far in EU. It's definitely been a really strong performance and last week definitely proved it. I'm getting our thumbs up, hey man. Best KDA for top laner, most damage, best CS difference. It's hard to argue. Those are all good stats. Uh, who we are in from NA? What an excellent question. It's got to be the best support in NA right now. That is Smoothie from C9. You got to ban this guy off Alistair. Oh, Absolutely alley. insane on that champion. 9.5 KD. A kill participation, nothing crazy. 76% for a support. 1.7 wards a minute. Uh, he's done a great job controlling vision, just being a voice for C9 and getting his teammates out of trouble on Tom Kench yeah. this week. Absolutely, that was a game where, you know what? Sneaky did not look the best that he's ever looked before. Zero <laughs> kills on a Jinx. <laughs> yeah, it was not looking so great, but it was Smoothie really performing for Cloud9. They had a great weekend, lots of strong performances. Licorice had a fantastic weekend for himself. Jensen was clapping people, but it absolutely has to go to Smoothie. This guy was a monster for Cloud9 and absolutely helped this team get what they needed to get done. Smoothie, and, and you bring it up, that Tom Kench. Oh, do I hate going up against Tom Kench. I would love to bench the Kench as many times as I can. Smoothie is exactly my nightmare on Tom Kench. That man was a monster. Great work, Smoothie. Uh, it, it is the infuriating era in the bottom lane with champions <laughs> like Braum and Tom Kench oh. being picked pretty much Every game, you can't do anything as an AD carry Get or other players against them. This is why, you know, the support I play with says, well, you just abandoned me in the bot lane. I'm like, I'm not abandoning you. I'm just not playing up against Tom Kench and Alistar. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm AFK farming yeah. jungle creeps. Uh, let's get to the reports from week four because there was a lot to choose from. Again, you could have picked anyone on H2K, but uh, <laughs> let's jump to EU and... We're going to go with Maxlore because Misfits looked not good at all. And Maxlore, no kills this week, five assists. That's it. Yeah. Over two games, 0.8 KDA. That damage per minute is gross. And one of those games he was on Rengar. As much as I hated Kadriel's performance for H2K in the jungle this weekend, there was arguably none worse than Maxlore's because Maxlore's, you actually expected something. You were expecting some performance, not only from him because he is a very talented jungler, but also from the Misfits because this is a team that should be finding themselves towards the top of the European power rankings, but again, just absolutely collapsed this week and find themselves towards the bottom of it. And Maxilor, sorry, buddy, you're a big reason why they find themselves at the bottom. Not a good weekend for him. Yeah, and it's still just crazy to me how clobbered they got by Rocket. I mean, the Giants game, it came down to kind of a toss up. They get destroyed in the final team fight close the game but again you had a 10k gold lead you probably should have won that so the collapse of misfits is a mystery to me yeah it's definitely one of those times where you're like oh you know there's their enemy jungler picking up another kill must be nice to have a jungler that actually does something it was just not a good weekend for max or wouldn't it be nice hopefully bounces back next week and gets misfits some of those wins that they need to climb up those rankings uh the team that dropped 
down the power rankings in NA was 100 Thieves. They had a great start to the split, but they haven't looked great the last couple of weeks, and neither has our boy Cody Sun. Again, he had some of the highest KDA in the first couple of weeks. This week, one. Oh. Not bad. Uh, down in both games at 15 minutes, and that damage per minute is only like 100 more than Max Lore, who was basically oh. AFK in those games. Uh, Cody Sun busted out the Ezreal and the Tristana. The Ezreal, some of the team fights are just painful to watch. Right. He's just on oh. the outskirts, maybe shooting a Q. Not every doing now and any then. type of impact. It's just, you know, it's one of those ones where you're like, you know, Twitch chat, they might be right. Cody's son has turned into Cody Dunn. He is not getting don't, don't, don't anything trust, done. Don't trust Twitch chat. It's just don't not go good. I mean, this guy, this is someone, you know, he showed a lot of bright signs at times with Immortals last year, but there were moments where you're like, what are you doing, buddy? You're an ADC, you can't, you can't be there. And we're talking about that get out of jail free card that Aphromoo gives. Well, it's not always up and available to be used. Not good enough. Cody's son, you're, you're holding back your team, buddy. Step it up. I mean, it's, he's still got a very young career. I know. Oh, oh, absolutely. And I believe in Cody's son getting better. That's why yeah, I want to yeah. challenge him here. Yeah, I know people like to meme him after his flash at Worlds that he did, and he didn't play that well in groups for Immortals. But, I mean, during last season, during the regular season, people were saying he was a top two, at worst, top three AD carry in the entire league. So he had a very bad week. No question about that. 100 Thieves had a bad week. Uh, I, I just don't like these Ezreal picks, man. That's, Almost every game you're like, even when they have Feast like, or famine. Feast or famine. There's never a feast. It's like <laughs> famine or you're satisfied the feast for is 10 if, minutes. The feast is if you're in the LCK and you're Teddy on, on Ezreal. Sure, That's the Teddy feast. Other than that. Or bang. But I don't know. In the LCS, it's just, even when these guys are ahead, Sven was pretty ahead on that Ezreal. It was underwhelming. Yeah. Was underwhelming. I don't like that pick. Anyways, Cody Sun really is somebody that I think if 100 Thieves is ever going to find their way back into being, you know, a playoff type of competition team, Cody Sun's really going to have to step up his game and not, and not be so vulnerable on this team. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.